Alrighty. Howdy neighbors, and welcome back to Dark Knights. Last time, we found out that sacrifices need to be made, no matter what. Because we died. Anyway, continuing. He throws me a wink and flies off into the darkness. Once I'm back home, I return to my usual spot. Then I pass by very slowly. All I do is stare at an empty street. Finally, it is the weekend. I browse through the newspaper, but there is nothing new. I mean, the police have nothing to report. I complete on my duty without any troubles at all. Fuck. I get a call from Leoji, who asks if everything was smoothly. I tell him all the details except for the encounter with Keiichi and the zombie. Leoji would be skeptical about it anyway. I saw a few people, but nothing out of the ordinary. Most fell asleep from boredom. Wow, aren't you lucky? Getting murdered for doing nothing. How's Ikuya holding up? You're right, she's surprisingly good at handling student council stuff. Well, the workload should ease up since the holidays start next week. Totally forgot about that. Well, don't forget our deal. Even though we don't get homework during the holidays, no problem. Hey, I didn't say... I didn't say which two weeks. So I assume the deal started right away when you accept the job. I can't add more details after I agreed to what was said. Fine, I lose this time. I hear chuckles on the other side. Whatever, it's not like the homework was a big deal. Tonight, I'll keep you watch through the window again. The streets are still empty. As I'm dozing off, I hear footsteps from downstairs. The sudden noise makes me jolt from my seat and I get up alarmed. What was that? After grabbing the umbrella from my table, I put an ear against the floor and focus on the footsteps. Hands are soft, almost careful. I wonder if it's a burglar. High possibility. Uh, it's highly possible during this time. Moving speed surprises me. They go from room to room, as if they're walking through walls. I move toward the stairs and suddenly slow down. I feel the sound of old creaking wood, as if someone is climbing up. I carefully move out of my room and stand at a distance. Facing the stairs, I wait for something to appear. But nobody comes up. I feel a cold chill running down my spine as my eyes stare at the empty space. I was sure someone was going upstairs. Did I imagine it? The footsteps continue, but now they're behind me. I immediately turn around and grasp my umbrella tightly. Hi. The boy stands there watching me with wide eyes. Oh my goodness. Shocked to trip on my feet and fall backward. Then the fall hurts, I quickly scramble to my feet and hold my makeshift weapon in front of me. My heart beats faster. I mean, I. <clears throat> my heart beats faster. When, when, I do not see anyone around. It's stunning and creepy. Maybe I'm imagining things. Where'd you go? The sound of footsteps is coming for the first floor again. It's almost like I landed in a horror movie. It's time to look at the staircase again. I see something. A boy crawls upstairs using his arms. His lower half is missing. I took her illusion. Body's frozen as the creepy scene plays before my eyes. The boy lifts his chin and looks straight at me. Found you. As I hear his words, the boy starts crawling faster. I scream and throw the umbrella at him. Good job. Before running back to my room. It really happened so fast, I feel like my body moved on its own. My heart is racing as I lean back against my door. I'm sure it was a ghost. Like I haven't seen enough weird things. Wait a second. Keiji said that otherworldly creatures are attracted to cursed souls. I turn my head and meet the gaze of the boy staring at me through the bedroom window. He knocks on the glass. I quickly close the curtains. I sit down on the desk, still feeling restless. My eyes are fixed on the window. Suddenly I hear the sound of something being unlocked! I'm homie here. There's a hand! Hi! His shadow is projected on the curtain, showing his hand reaching toward the window. Right tells me to run away. I return to my bedroom and leave the house through the back door. The night air was cold, making me wish I had taken a jacket. Where should I go? Leoji? Iguya. I run down the road above to a woman. She looks up as I apologize to her. I don't think she's up to grab me. What? I back away to dodge her. Get me. Every second I realize it's not a look at the person. Such bad timing. I'm gonna report this on to Leoji. <laughs> Get away from me. I'm not gonna take out the pepper spray that Leoji gave me. I was surprisingly fast, she grabbed the bottle before I had a chance to use it. I'll bear handed, I was looking to defend myself. 
I only have a handcuffs left. But it would be difficult to put it down. All I could do right now is get away from it. So dumb. The toy is a police office. Fuck. I don't want to do it again. Okay. I continued to run and somehow end up in the forest. The woman is still after me. She used to make it easier to hide and shake her off. I run in zigzags and take many turns. But hiding the bushes, I watched the woman looking around in confusion. And then she turned around, presumably having given up. Breathing relief, which she finally walks out of sight. With adrenaline gone from my body, I feel exhausted. Now I should go home. What if the ghost is still there? The fact of your chills makes me hesitate at my decision. Who are you hiding from? Hand rests on my shoulders as I jump up in surprise. Ah! I don't think you've seen a ghost. Oh, is that. That's actually not far from the truth. What are you doing out here this late? I'm being chased by a zombie woman. But I see the same. I thought you were hanging around my place. There's something that I had to take care of. I see. Oh, there's a ghost haunting my place. I've never encountered one before. And it scared me so much I ran from my house. Should I come to check? My eyes light up as often when I pull a sleeve. Guys, I come to my place. Search every room and corner, but the boy from before is nowhere to be found. Now oh, that's cleared up. I shall take my leave. Wait. I'm not scared to stay. I'm still not at ease after everything that happened tonight. This made sense before letting out a sigh. He's gonna be happier when he decides to give you company. What have you been doing these days? You seem so busy. I can say the same about you. You're going out quite often at night, putting yourself in danger recklessly. I took a job to keep an eye on the neighborhood. Going out wasn't a part of the plan. Things just happen. Nikun shakes his head. He reaches out his hand and gently strokes my head. I blink at his gesture. Curiosity is the force of nature sometimes. But will you listen to me for once? I don't want to restrain your actions, but you're making it difficult for me. Well... The activities of corrupt souls are increasing. It's highly likely that more will flock to you. Try to investigate the source and keep an eye on you at the same time. I have to be constantly watched. I'm not that fragile. I couldn't pulls back his hand and looks at me with narrowed eyes. I know. I wouldn't be here if you hadn't saved me so many times. I'm sorry to make you worry. He nods at my comment, but his expression is still stern. Today's Sunday, my day off. When I wake up, Zyquin has already left. I'm thankful that he stayed here for the night. I report the zombie woman to the office. Hopefully they'll be able to catch her soon. But I don't know how they're going to deal with zombies, though. So far, they were only seen at night. But I have a fair guess that they are active during the day as well. I have no clue where they could be hiding. I'll make sure I'm prepared this time. I try to gather information. I to the library and take a look at the activities of similar events. There used to be a laboratory in the village, but it was shut down a long time ago. Perhaps a scientific explanation won't help. We're dealing with demons and other supernatural creatures, after all. Now we should ask the priests. The only useful information I could find is how to kill zombies. Individually, they are easy to defeat. However, they pose a threat in large groups. I'm glad to have a Shinigami and a demon on my side. We should be able to take them on together. Even though it's my day off, I feel motivated to work harder. I end up spending hours at the library. Nothing on the shelf. I thought I would at least find something in the history section. I should think outside the box. Ooh! Hi, Rasumi! Hey, try the fiction section or watching TV. I might give you some ideas. I hear a familiar voice calling me and I turn around. Rasumi walks over and greets me with a tight hug. Nice to see you here. Try to keep your voice down. You scared me back there. Pfft, there's barely anyone here. Anyway, what's up? I felt like going to the mall, but it wasn't as fun as I thought. Shopping alone is so boring. There's nobody to tell me how I look in new outfits. The shop is so not reliable. I either say I'm good in everything or try to find something else in the store that will suit me. Why don't you ask your friends to tie along? She frowns a bit, then changes her expression as she looks at me. You make a great shopping buddy. Wait. So I protest, I get dragged into shopping with her. On second thought, I might need some fresh air after spending time inside all day. By the time we're done, it's already evening. But I continue my investigation. 
Rasumi ends up sticking to my side on the way home. Coincidentally, we head in the same direction. Where do you live, Rasumi? I haven't memorized my address. Haha. <laughs> I've only been. It's only been a short time since I moved to the village. If you turn left at the end of this road, I head straight. Then make a second left turn, you'll reach my place. That's close to the park. There are missing posters on walls and posts along the road. Each time someone is discovered, their faces are removed. These have been around for a while, and more have piled up recently. <clears throat> Noticing my gaze, Rasumi stops and turns to the posters. She narrows her eyes, slightly tilts her head while staring at the images. These people. Do you recognize anyone? They look so familiar. I think I've seen them around. Where? I left home I saw this person in the park. I recognize this face. Though he didn't have a nose that time. He definitely looks better in the photo. I have a weird feeling in my gut. I'm heading to the park. Wait up. I switch at the park, and I do not catch any familiar faces. They go into hiding when I'm looking for them, and appear when I'm not. Why are you so worked up? Oh, why are you so worked up? The police will find them. Oh, sorry. I think your job is an investigator temporarily, and I have to identify these people and report them. It's been a few days, and there is no progress. Ooh, I see. Let me help. I'll let you know if I see any of these people again. And then somebody approaches us. And effectively, it's Keiichi. Yo, fancy seeing you here. Hey, Keiichi. Who brings you here? Keiichi? Rasumi looks at him with narrowed eyes. Her said she never met the older version of him, only the younger one. He chuckles amusedly at her reaction. He's just a friend of mine. Hmm. It's like I've seen you some before. I have a classmate with the same name. He has blonde hair, green eyes as well. Are you two related? Could just be a coincidence. The thought immediately runs through my mind. He isn't here to kidnap Rasumi, right? I lock Keiichi's view of Rasumi and stand on my tiptoes. I in a serious tone while pinning my gaze on him. What business do you have here? You're not going to do anything to my friend, are you? I'm not interested in her. I have to choose zombies that are already in the park. It'll be a little hard with that girl over there. I'm not playing bodyguard for both of you. I don't have to, I can take care of Rasumi and myself. I should back to Rasumi and pull her toward the park's entrance. Let's go. We're leaving already. I thought you wanted to look for the missing people. Perhaps they're gone. We should look elsewhere. At the moment, our surroundings turn dark. Then we're completely surrounded by zombies. Thanks, KG. You totally jinxed us. Good job. You led them straight to us. He just smirks and pulls the scythe out. Swings immediately into action and fights with them. Yeah, I try to take Rasumi to a safer place, but she stands there staring in awe. Is she in shock? I can't do to get her to move. Rasumi, this is not real. You're just dreaming with the Shinigami fighting the zombies. That appeared out of nowhere. He's a Shinigami. We're distracted when the zombies head toward us. Not notice until they were only a few feet away. Members, the teeth attempting to bite us. They quickly push Rasumi away, putting me right in front of it. And they grasp my left arm roughly, and a dull pressure presses into my skin. It does not take long before a striking pain shoots through my body. I was getting crushed. Hopefully, I kick him away and pull my arm free. My sleeve has been torn apart, exposing a flesh wound on my skin. I got bitten by a zombie. I try to stick a pose, but I feel my heart beating faster. Okay, I was hanging there. As he pulls out a handkerchief from a pocket and wraps it around my wound to stop it from bleeding. But before they get you two, I might be done for. Oh no. Don't you try to sacrifice yourself. Tell me. You don't want to die here, right? I heard that those who, sac who survived a zombie by certain as zombies themselves you better leave me here. Just go. Rasumi grabs my hand, but I pull it away, taking a step back. It just starts to blur as a wave of dizziness washes over me. I did not expect anemia to kick in so soon. Rasumi looks at me with pained eyes, then shakes her head. After a moment of contemptness, she takes a small bottle out of her pocket and pours its contents over my wound. The color changes and touches my skin. I can't tell what kind of fluid it is. It's an emergency medicine I developed. I hope it works. Due to shock, I cannot comprehend what is going on. A sensation coursing through my body before I black out. Hmm. I slowly open my eyes and blink a few times to clear my vision. I look at the surroundings of laying on the park bench. Ah, I'm finally awake. Hi, Keiji. In Keiji's voice, I jolt upright and realize that he's sitting beside me. 
What happened? How long was I... Eh, my head hurts. Hitchie takes out a pocket watch and checks the time. Nothing much happened while you were down for. 147 minutes. So that's... Two hours and... Almost two and a half hours. I took down the zombie... I took down those zombies down and purified the souls that remained in their bodies. Where did Rasume? Where about yourself first? I remember I got bitten by a zombie. I remember Rasume gave me something. Wait, am I dead? I'm 100% alive and kicking. Look at my arm. It's not a single scratch. And my torn bloody sleeve confirms that it did happen. How did it heal so fast? Keiichi looks down- oh, leans down to look at me with suspicious eyes. And reflects it back away. You cursed souls are really something. You're too reckless. You only survived because that witch gave you medicine. What? The girl that was with you was quite suspicious. What kind of medicine did she give me? I would tell you that it's infused with powerful energy. If she made it herself, she can even be considered a demon. I'm just assuming she's a witch for now. As Keiji speaks, his attention seems to drift away. Looks like he wants to say more, but stays quiet. You're making me even more nervous. Well, I questioned her while you were out, and she does not seem to have ill intentions. She even shared a piece of information regarding these zombies. After finding out what's going on in the village, she decided to come here to clean out the zombies. Unfortunately, she's not strong enough to fight the source. She was looking for a potential person to take this potion and fight against them. Pretty sure she chose me because it was convenient. It takes me a while to get what Kei was telling me. I my lip and touch my arm. Most of the zombies are either evil spirits that take form or that took form or possessed dead bodies. The root is in the old forest. There has been a lot of dark energy gathering there nowadays. Though I have not been able to cross that area because of the forest demon's territory. What's exactly in there? No, no. That's all that she told me. So what am I supposed to do now? Rest me associate to fight off evil spirits after taking a weird potion? I inspected your body and... You inspected my body. Don't get weird ideas, okay? Just making sure you didn't turn into Godzilla or something. There doesn't seem to be any traces of poison in your body. So you don't have to worry about turning into a zombie. I don't have enough knowledge to determine what the potion did to you. But try to keep an eye on what changes might occur. Is there a way to get me back to normal? Maybe if you will allow me to experiment on you. No. Just kidding. You better ask the witch yourself. Where'd she go? Keiichi shrugs, his expression a bit tight. Even though my legs feel weak, I try to stand up. It's late, I'm going home. Like this. You look like you're about to get blown away by the wind. I shoot him a glare and walk away from him, ignoring his words. I sit close to the walls in case I lose my balance. I can faintly hear footsteps behind me. Do you have anything better to do instead of following me? The night is young. I still have time before I chase down another soul. I'll do whatever you want, but don't stick around me. You're so cold. What have I ever done to you? Let's see. I attempted kidnapping of two minors, homicide, murder, kidnapping again. I should at least more. Well, um... For the rest of the walk, he falls behind quietly. I wish I home, I slam the door closed before I can enter. Slip so steadily, I walk to my room. Peek through the curtains. Keiichi is still standing by the road. As long as he remains outside, I guess I don't have to worry about him too much. Dear, I feel hot. Hopefully I'm not getting a fever. Other than that, I don't see any notable changes to my body. I really hope that Rasume gave me is just a healing potion. I look at where I was bitten back then. I run my fingers along the skin, trying to remember the sensation I had felt. I'm glad that I didn't turn into a zombie. It'll be difficult to report to Leoji about the zombies. But I should at least tell him that the park is not a safe place at the moment. Get my phone to send Leoji a quick message. Tired, I drop onto the bed and fall asleep in no time. Soft voice whispers my name. Out of curiosity, I move around to find where it came from, but I'm only surrounded by darkness. Suddenly my body feels heavy. I sense cold chains pulling my limbs down. Even though I'm frozen to the spot, I continue to look around and focus my focus on the voice. You've changed so much. Changed in what way? 
You've changed, changed, changed. Hmm? I've changed. Killer. Hey, yo! Soon I see lit torches heading toward me. A wall of fire suddenly surrounds me, caging me inside. I'm getting burned alive. I'm not a zombie. Don't kill me, please. I'm not. Because I open my eyes, I realize I'm still in bed. My body's covered in sweat. I notice my blanket is on the floor. I slowly slid up and open the curtains. I slowly sit up and open the curtains. The sun is not even risen yet. It must be early. I'm not feeling like sitting in bed any longer. I get up and head for the kitchen. I don't really feel hungry, but maybe eating something will do me some good. I think beets toast with crispy bacon and melted cheese. While chewing on food, I pick up the newspaper from the door and browse through it. Aside from relative advertisements, there are new reports. I asked the faces from the poster last night. I would report that they were already dead, but I have no proof since the bodies have been taken care of. I wonder what Zaikun has been doing. I haven't heard anything from him the past few days. I remember what Keishi told me yesterday about the source coming from the forest. If that's true, the Zaikun should know about it. I finish up my meal and decide to pay a visit to the forest. It should be okay to move around in daylight. As I walk down the street, my eyes catch a glimpse of the dark mass passing by. Thankfully, it's just harmlessly floating around people, but it feels odd to see it. And I've gotten used to my ability to see spirits. Oh, this song has not played in forever! I've missed this song! Let's go further into the forest, the number of spirits increase. They don't seem to cause me any harm as I move on, pretending not to have seen them. Two more fellow spirits pop up before me, blocking my way. Master, you mustn't enter the forest now. What's going on here? The amount of dark spirits have increased, so it isn't safe to. I'm going to see Zykun. Wait, Master. We are ordered to send you back. Despite their warnings, I continue walking past them. Where there are always this many. Yes, but lately, some of them have changed. Master, can you see all of them? Yeah. Anyway, where's Zykun? I'm not supposed to tell you. I give you a new order. Find Zykun for me. The marshmallows look at each other and start discussing it among themselves. After a while, they seem to come to a conclusion. They agree on the condition that I do not tell Zykun they led me to him, and that I take responsibility for anything that happens. Feel the surroundings change as I move on. When my attention is elsewhere for a second, the marshmallows have vanished into thin air. Where did you go? There's no one here. There's an eerie sound behind me. They were ignoring it, but that's what they grabs my arm. I immediately pull my arm away, looking at my assailant. Gloomy purple eyes meet my gaze. Busted. Thought I told those two to keep you away from here. Sounds like you're trying to hide something from me. Believe what you want. It's just after danger, a favorite pastime of yours. I was worried about you. We haven't spoken in days. Now you're greeting me with go away. I don't know if you figured it out yet, but I wanted to tell you something about the forest. I hear a sharp intake of breath from his direction. My voice fades when I see his expression darkening. He folds his arms and approaches me slowly, and reflux I step back. They go too far. He moves back as Zykun gets closer. Then I back into the tree, before I realize I have a corner myself. Well, shit! <laughs> Zykun holds my wrist and presses them down against the trunk. I gasp at a sudden change of behavior, but I stay still, looking into his eyes. They're in pain. He has a trembling against mine. It's so hard to see through him. He slowly put, pull my hand out of his grasp and put it on his cheek. My lips form a soft smile. He frowns in confusion. I feel his grip on my other wrist loosen. He lowers his shoulders, softens his expression. Multiple emotions are written on his face. I wonder what's going through his mind. He pulls away immediately and turns away from me. Suddenly he lets out a small groan, bringing his head to his he can bring his hand to his head. I notice a faint hint of dark aura around him. He's being possessed by evil spirits. He almost loses his balance and sinks down to his knees. 
Fun. I want to go from his head as he grits his teeth. This sudden transformation surprises me. The dark aura around him pulses. I've been struggling for a short while. He kneels over and stops moving. Slowly I go to check on him. I'm relieved to see that he's still breathing. I call his name, but he does not react. I remember he was like him struggling with his physical condition. He must have been working so hard to hide this from me. I take him to the temple. A few spirits appear around me, surrounding Zykun's body. They seem to lift his body up. I cannot be happier to receive some help. The spirits lead the way. On our way there, I notice some dark masses watching us from the distance. I think they are staying away because of me. Oh, this forest is only filled with pure spirits. I thought this forest was only filled with pure spirits. How are these dark ones? How did the dark ones end up here? As we reach the temple, the spirits that carried him disperse. He puts Zakun and a futon to sit beside him. I take off my jacket and place it on top of him as an extra cover. Memories flash through my mind as I softly brush my hand over his cheek. He acts so distant, but, we, but when we talk or sit next to each other, he always has a warm look in his eyes. I have never worried so much for someone. This is the soundlessly. He reverts back to his human form. I can tell he is recovering. Oh my, it started raining. I'm glad we got here in time. Moments later, as I can open his eyes, he immediately shifts his gaze to me. Once he examines his surroundings, he slowly sits up. He finally awake, he had me worried there. He puts his head and mumbles himself. Tell me, your dark spirit's taking over your body. Perhaps. I've been around them too much. How did that happen to you? Is that of your concern? Even though they tried to fuck me, I still have control. Why did you not run away from me when you saw something was off? I didn't want to leave you alone. He brought up my answer in tones of awe. I want to say more, but he does not seem to be in the mood to talk. He always sweat off his forehead and as he takes time to regain his energy. Rarely hands touch his back, his voice full of scars. We turn his look and eyes meet. Why do you feel so much about me? Because you helped me and supported me during hard times. I'm not obligated to return the favor. Then you're wrong, you won't do you any good. I'm not showing you any pity, and I'm free to do what I want. It just pains me to see, you going th to see what you're going through. When there's something, tearing everything on your shoulders alone. I'm doing my best to do my part for the village. That uses the burden of it. Your faith in the villagers may be a little. I hope you can trust me. I know I'm selfish of me, and I'm sorry if it's a bother. I love my head about my life. Even though I have known him for a while now, he still has so many walls around him. I might have been approaching him the wrong way. In that case, I should really stop bothering him. And I feel Zykun's arms wrapping around me. Let's get closer until I feel the warmth of his body. It feels comfortable. I'm confused. We keep assisting to help, but I don't want to make use of you. His body and my arms are so fragile. I don't know what will make it break. You're already doing enough. I don't need to ask more of you. I hold my breath as I hear his whispers. My hand clutches his shirt as I rest my chin on his broad shoulder. Before I can reply, his body sags on me and I nearly fall back. As I go, I fall back and notice he's collapsed again. I put it back on the futon and watch over him again. Let's find the source as soon as possible, and have Rasumi tell me how to expel it. My heart is still racing, what Zakun just told me. Now I know for sure I cannot leave his side. Take out my handkerchief from my pocket and wipe away sweat from his forehead. When my fingers touch him, a scene flashes before my eyes. My thoughts are hazy, it feels like I'm dreaming. Every night, Zakun patrolled the forest, mostly checking on the spirits. There were dark spirits lingering from the very start, but lately they have grown into a worrisome amount. At some point, unknown creatures started to merge with the original residents of the forest. Some even matured into mutated into different species. Those dark spirits are disrupting the balance. There are way too many. Some idiot must have brought them here. It took a few days of searching before Zakun bumped into a mysterious portal. In an older part of the forest, the hole floated in midair. I saw 
I knew something had caused it. So much damage for a dumb mistake. Triple Guardian will take care of the remaining scraps. With a single gesture, he closed the portal. Nights passed by soundlessly, and the forest seemed to have found balance again. On the other hand, strange things started to happen in the village. The remaining dark spirits have left the forest and now roam the streets. I think my place is haunted. I mean, I'd hear strange noises. Before, my house was so quiet that you couldn't even hear crickets. My dog hasn't returned in a few days. Soon, everything around the barn was locked. How could she have escaped? My wife suddenly caught a rare disease. I hear voices talking to me around a certain time at night. Odd, because I live alone. Many rumors started to spread. Everyone blamed the forest demon, thinking it brought calamity again. To please them, they brought offerings to the shrine. Never laid a finger on this village. Those idiots put the blame on me just because of some baseless rumors. At least be thankful I keep other demons away from you. When he's patrol at night, I can notice a little girl walking along the forest. Your friend from exposing herself is simply watched from a distance. It's a child from that woman who badmouthed me. What's she doing all alone here? Um, where are you? I'm so lost. I just said there are demons in the forest. I want to go home. I hate demons. The girl started to cry as she moved further. Being so loud, her cry startled some near a nearby group of bats. They swung around her and picked on her, where he's hitting her face. To add fuel to the fire, the spirits started to get restless and chase after the girl as well. Made her even more scared. Invisible hands. Ah! She waved her arms around wildly and ran aimlessly through the forest. No will go in that direction. The spirits stopped chasing her. I went after the child, but the girl suddenly disappeared from his sight. A little further away, he saw a cliff. Oh, The girl had not seen this and fell right off. It did not take long for the, for the villagers to find out the child went into the forest. Madam, I think she walked off the path. The undergrowth is quite crowded here. If she's a small child, she could be anywhere. Be careful, there's a cliff not far away. This is her hairband. My girl couldn't have. No, she couldn't. It's dangerous to be in this area. Rumor says that demon possessed people and led them to the cliff. Why did it have to be my innocent child? Give her back, you heartless demon. The woman broke down, falling to her knees. Her cries were filled with rage. When I guided her back to the village, there was nothing else they could do. I could not quietly watch the sea through the shadows. My spirits swung around him and whispered their thoughts. I say I should have helped her. I can't anticipate every incident. Your attempts to push guilt on me is futile. The following weeks, more incidents occurred in the forest. Two famous riders, Redo and Kaith, both drowned in the rivers. Zykun tried to save them, but by the time he arrived, it was too late. As the people were declared missing, rumors of the forest demons started spreading again. Some priest got called to purify the forest. They did not manage to catch the demon himself, and spirited away harmless spirits instead. All Zykun could do was watch the home his grandmother built crumble down. Master, don't you feel bad for everyone? Don't you feel bad that everyone is blaming you for every incident? I don't care. Don't bother to ask. I don't intend to save them either. You protect the spirits. Why not the people too? Maybe they will change their opinion of you. What about the blessed ones? Even though they are living in the village, surely they are on your side. Tell that to my grandmother. All humans are the same. One day, a blessed soul entered the forest. Unlike previous visitors, this little boy did not seem to be scared. He even played with the spirits that floated around. They seemed to be fond of him as well. It was the first time Zykun saw such an interaction. The boy came back multiple times. During each visit, he played with the spirits. Zykun only observed, not wanting to intervene. After all, the boy was carefree and was only having fun. <coughs> As time went on, Zykun deemed the boy was not threatening and slowly shifted his attention away from him. He also hoped that no villager came to look for him. Having one day, a stray demon entered the forest. Immediately sensing the little boy's presence, it devoured his soul in no time at all. Zykun caught the demon in the action, but just like the previous times, 
he was too late. With no way to retrieve souls that had already been eaten. The experience left him blank. Master, are you okay? You seem to be rooted today. Master, let's share the questions. Today, one of the blessed souls got devoured. Of course, Master was unhappy. But it was like fun of them. It's different this time. I can return to his temple and encounter the surprise. For both of them was with white charms. He commanded his familiars to clean them up before he entered. We went away for a few hours. It's like a group of, of priests hosted an exorcism at the temple. Which went on the charms. Purify. No more evil. Go away, demon. Poor master. As if such little tricks will harm me. These charms are just small annoyance. Clean them up before they come again. When will the guardian return? I've been housekeeping the, his temple for ages. A long time had passed as Zycon encountered the next blessed soul. The presence was faint, but it caught his attention nonetheless. So when he met me! It was one of the very few times Zycon directly interacted with the villager. Because of his previous mistake, he decided to keep an eye on her. The master is quite unexpected for you to save her. I don't want to see someone dying before my eyes again. It's so kind of you. There's nothing like that. It's for my own benefit. The villagers start cursing me again if another life is lost. Evil spirits easily get drawn towards Zykun, as if she was a magnet. The voices whispered around him. A demon should act like one. Trick of those you've earned. Oh, trick of those you've earned their trust. Kill them, eat them. Why are so many spirits surrounding us? This is going to happen. Just don't listen to him. As long as I stay on guard, these evil spirits won't stain me. Zykun realized his strings are uh, really strings of light. Shutting the dark masses around him. His spirits only float away temporarily. As I could spend more time with games, his opinion on the humans changed. The girl tried changing what he could not. He met more people after and realized they were not as bad as he thought. After the incident with the tourists, I can do his best to keep people out. If those lost in the forest were to get possessed by dark spirits, he would chase the spirits away and get the people back to the village. I was told there were no more disappearances in the forest. The number of incidents was reduced and the priest stopped coming to the temple. From there, he started to interact less with humans. There was one person who kept coming back. Even though she knows what I am, why does she continue to stick around? Way to go, Master. You've created bonds with the villagers. It's not like I want that. It's a good development. Despite what he thought, Zakun kept saving her from trouble. As the sword opened up to her, more darkness started to surround him. Despite being fully aware of the situation, he kept going. He had to finish what he started. Master, why are you suddenly so dedicated to help every one of them? I just changed my mind. I'm to a condition. I'm not. I couldn't cover his mouth as he coughed up blood. You can't keep going like this or the hunter will really take care of you. Will really take your life. I can't stop now. Master. Dark spirits will link have increased again lately. The four spirits are restless. Where's the guardian? Where did the guardian of the village go anyway? He's supposed to. Oh, he's supposed to be the one to keep excessive spirits away, not me. The guardian disappeared a while ago. No, could just disappear. He must be somewhere. I can't possibly. No, I'll find a way somehow. Iko took a deep breath and bit his lower lip. Like the guardian. He did not have the power to purify spirits. All he could do was keep villages away from harm, and protect the pure spirits in the forest. Over the next few days, he detected some odd presences, a Shinigami and an angel. The angel was not doing any harm, so Zaikun merely let her be. However, the Shinigami's intentions were, were very easy to read. Despite his efforts, Zaikun failed to protect the few souls that were being snatched away. Unable to watch more of them get taken away, he fought the Shinigami head on. Several villagers even got accidentally killed during the battle. As Zaikun distracted, stray dark spirits possessed the dead bodies, resurrecting them as zombies. Since then, Zaikun stayed in the forest to keep guard. He was running out of options. He became teary eyed after the memories faded. 
I feel like I understand Zakun even more. Who enough of the villagers? Maybe he would not have turned out like this. Hold on to his hand and squeeze it tightly. Wish to share his burdens. I feel his thumb brush over mine and he opens his eyes. I was just checking your body temperature. There are more effective ways of doing that besides holding my hand. Feeling better now. No need to keep worrying. Embarrassed, I let him go and give a nervous laugh. After he gets up, the silence falls between us. While I'm lost in thought, he gazes into my eyes, as if he expects me to say something. I wonder if he knew that I peek at his memories. Did he show it to me on purpose? Should have gotten all your answers. He sighs softly, heading toward the temple entrance. I notice it's still raining heavily. He grabs his howdy. Howdy? Puts it on. Where are you going? You just covered. Checking the spirits is safe. Spirit eating demons occasionally appear. And I have to get rid of them before more dangerous ones. Before more things are done. What happens if you can't? If his master is bound to the forest, he will disappear along with his residence. They choose the same lifespan as forest spirits. Sounds like a curse. It is. The collar around his neck is proof. Look at Zekun's collar. I never really put much thought into it until now. The solution. If one of the blessed souls returns there. Enough, you don't have to tell her. Zekun silences the marshmallows. Anyway, I'm going out. Stay here just to be safe. Even though my protests really work, I simply nod and watch him leave. If I show well, however, I start heading in the same direction he did, because I'm a dumbass. I hope I can catch up. In his current condition, he is in no state to fight. Here I notice a dark mass sticking to him. Hopefully he did not take the marshmallow spirits. I can ask for their help if I lose sight of him. The force is calm tonight. I see bright spirits floating around. Even if one of them dies, oh, if every one of them dies, I can roll too. <coughs> they're even fragments, oh, they're like fragments of his life. He knows the spirits around. They look so cute. So captivated that I should forget that I'm tailing Zycoon. Where'd he go? He's moving so fast. I start running, but I start going to hear voices ahead. I know myself in the bushes. I watch what's going on. Ooh. I'm gonna send him my territory again. Dang, I still failed. It's more powerful than I thought. Anyway, I come here on official business. I can look the other way for once. Last time I told you I will not hold back if I see you again. Just for once. No. <laughs> but it's agreeable. I now see why your now see why your reputation is so bad. Like his eyes shift to his mother form. He pulls out a scythe with a burst of smoke. He's already a few feet away from his icon. Swiftly swings his weapon in a way meant to kill. Sharp edge almost touches Zykun, but the strings he immediately punches. Oh. If not for the string, he immediately punches to block the attack. Things that look like true roots grow in the shaft of Keiji's scythe. Wrong for his opponent. Echo seems to be at disadvantage. He is slower based on previous battles I've seen. He is breathing harder than usual. He is in good form today, so why is he still fighting? When I look closer, I notice a black mask hanging around his body, like chains weighing him down. Your time is over. The evil spirits will consume you soon. It is a sense of reason. Who knows what you will do to the village? I'm here to take care of you before anything happens. How can you take advantage of my state? Thumb here around, you're able to steal souls freely from the village. I'm just here to make sure there will still be souls around to take. There's a back to the battle between Zyking and Chain. And it badly on both sides, all because of a misunderstanding. I managed to get a hold of Cage's weapon. Hold the floor of the battle with my eyes, waiting patiently. And if the right moment comes, I clench my hands and go out for a hiding space. While Keiichi is barely holding off Zyko, I reach for his side. Knowing his weapon starts moving on its own. Being on the path, I take the full blow of its attacks. <laughs> Only I was knocked out of my lungs and my body gets thrown aside. Feels like I've just been hit. A second later, a pair of arms embrace my torso. He is up a Zycoon. It's the first time I've ever seen his devastated expression. I think it's hazy and numb. I don't understand the situation until I look down. There's no blood or ripped skin. 
Just a ghostly looking area. I feel no pain at all. Lagoon is saying something to me, but I can't hear it. Open my mouth, but no words cross my lips. I attempt to speak a futile. Slowly my eyelids start to close. My gaze is fixed on Zycoon. I notice the area around him growing darker. My spirit surrounding him, as if he's drawing them in. Shortly after I pass out. My surroundings feel so cold, like I'm being frozen alive. This is how it feels to die. My sense to grow duller until I feel nothing. I don't know how long I spent in that state. Suddenly like waving from a deep sleep, all the feelings return to my body and I slowly gain the strength to move my limbs. But in my eyes I'm surrounded by bright spirits. For some reason I'm wearing different clothes and the gap in my body has disappeared. Ah! A familiar face pops into view. You're awake. Hi Rasumi. Looks different. I can tell it's her. So they set up and try to process what's going on. Thank goodness the potion worked. Those wings. Are you an angel? Am I in heaven? Oh no, you didn't die. The potion I gave you last time is a dark type that protects your body from poison and magical attacks. It was created by the ones who sealed the previous force demon away. It only activates when you're close to death, though. It is my own powers to heal your body after that. I've walked on the edge of death too many times to be surprised. It doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like I'm normal anymore. Please patch me up, but... Why don't you say anything about the potion? You were dying from the zombie bite. I didn't have time to think it over. So what am I now? I survived a zombie bite and a Shinigami attack. Did I gain more powers? Oh, it was just you. The potion just made sure you didn't die too easy. Too bad. I try to get the Marshmallow Spirits to give me relief. Master, you're alive! Thank you, Angel, for helping her. Don't fret, I only pressed her up a bit and switched her torn clothes with new ones. I checked my body for anything else that's off, but everything seems fine. I remember Zekun and Keiichi battling when I got hit. I asked the spirits what happened after that. Master, I thought you died. I just guard down at the time. Oh. He got possessed by all the evil spirits in the area and went on a rampage. How could that happen? Shinigami left the village as he thought he couldn't get your soul anymore. He didn't want to deal with our master either. Where does Zaikun go? Let's go to the village. Be quick enough, you can catch up with him. I'll go right now. I have to stop him from doing something he'll regret. Trust me, I mentioned something back then about having power to save the village. The area is a bit dramatic with the phrasing. Major barriers, capable to defend against attacks. In fact, it's a range. I think it's a range widened after getting into contact with our potion and spirits. I don't know enough to tell you how exactly you can use it, but I believe you can figure it out yourself. Last week passed my shoulder and smiles to reassure me. The marshmallow is leading the way, I find my way back to the village. Long after I encountered people in an uproar among the streets, they're running toward the park. Here's the park, the group of priests already gathered there. I had nearby to eaves up on the conversation. Really, I saw a demon. It devoured my neighbors right before my eyes. I couldn't have imagined it. So it came down this way. Don't worry. We're all gathered here to cast it away. Here you describe its appearance. It had crimson hair and glowing eyes. On top of that, there are large horns on his head. I did like a beast. That thing can't be left alive. When I able to contain my anger, I step forward and snap at them. Hey, you shouldn't talk about him like that. And that was a flat-out lie. Nobody's ever seen a demon before. How do we know he's even... He even ate humans in the first place. Who are you? Should I listen to you? I'll be spreading nonsense too. What do you know about demons? Calm down, madam. She might be our new recruit. The priest looks down at me and politely bows. We are the new girl who applied for the position. I don't know what this position is, but for now I'll play along. It'll be easier than such a as I can alone. As the priests discuss their tactics, I realize that they will use a bait to attack the de attract the demon, which the group will ambush them. The strategy is questionable, yet they think it's an airtight plan. One of the leader is able to sense the dark energy. With good senses, we can figure out where Zykun is hiding. I have to find Zykun to help him escape without them noticing. Maybe I can make it look like an accident. A lot of dark energy comes from the library. Everyone get into position. The library has been smashed to pieces, the bullhead run through it. 
nothing that dares makes you worry. As much as I want to help, it's not like. As much as I want to hope, it's not Zykun's doing. He is definitely capable of something like this. I wonder why he would do such a thing. The place is so large, he could be hiding anywhere. Let's try looking upstairs. I go up and feel a strong aura approaching me. It feels familiar. In the corner of my eye, I see a book thrown at me. I catch it on time with one hand. Reveal yourself. Is that you, Zykun? There's someone kneeling on a pile of books, holding torn pages. Shelves in front of him are a mess. Books are scattered over the floor, mostly ripped apart. If I get closer, I recognize Zykun. Her with his dark aura surrounding him, thicker than before. Does he still recognize me? Remember his dislike of being approached from behind, so I make sure to stay in his line of sight as I slowly move toward him. Zykun, what are you doing here? His gaze shifts to me after hearing my voice, and reply a soft growl leaves his mouth. Why are you tearing these books apart? The pages burn up in flames in his hands. Within seconds, they vanish into thin air. He stands up and turns to me. Come, let's get out of here. There are priests in the library. They detect your presence and want to get rid of you. We should. I couldn't suddenly close the distance and grabs me by the shoulders. I look up his expression. It's a mix of sadness and anger. I cannot tell if that expression reflects his own feelings or that of the evil spirits taking over his body. Erase my existence. If all I bring is calamity and death, I'm better off forgotten. You know that's not true. I hate this library. Rumors won't end as long as people remember. Don't do this, Icoon. Perhaps I should end this myself. For all the four spirits, I need to. Icoon, don't tell me you plan to erase them, you'll die. The village will be at peace without me. You've done nothing wrong. Why would you give up your life just because people point their fingers blindly? Please don't leave. My vision turns blur as I clench his howdy. At the same time, his grip on my shoulders loosen. The black mass on his body swirls around my hands before suddenly dispersing. The voices are coming clearer as the priests are heading in our direction. There's some more dark energy coming from upstairs. Look, he took the girl hostage. Everyone hurry over there. Wait, this is a misunderstanding. Lycan pulls away from me and glares at the priests gathered around us. They block our way to the stairs. The priests start chanting as Zykun sprints to the balcony. They quickly grab his hand to stop him, but instead get pulled along as he jumps over the railing. The shock in his eyes... In his eyes... It... Wait. The shock in his eyes... In his eyes... Okay. Is another expression I never thought to see. I'm sorry that I failed to protect you, but you can't die without learning that there are people who care about you. As I speak, it feels like time has slowed down. I pull myself closer to Zykun. Hey, yeah. So we're face to face, I gently press my lips to his. I observe the black mass dispersing from his body. His eyes are clear as he looks at me. My action catches him off guard. But he lets me guide the movements. Our bodies float in air, surrounded by spirit lights. The fall that should have taken seconds feels like an eternity. But my eyes were already on the ground. Faint strings of light surround us. Like who must have used this off in our landing. Hear people running to us. I instinctively look at them. What happened? How did they get away without a scratch? Who cares? Keep chanting. I won't let it go. I turn to Zaku and he has already escaped. Girl, are you okay? He didn't do something to you, right? Don't worry about me, I'm fine. Get some rest, we'll take over. I keep telling you not to go after him. The demon is corrupted by evil spirits. You should help him instead of driving him away. You don't even know anything about him. Here before we lose track of him. I try to convince them, but none of them even bat an eye. I realize it's a useless attempt. Moreover, their hatred has grown worse after what happened here. The situation always feels hopeless, but I still ponder what I can do. I my lips and realize something. Back then when we kissed, I heard the spirits responding to my touch. I can save him with the power of hugs and kisses. <laughs> the power of friendship. I'm going to wait at the forest and encounter Rasu me. How's your progress? You're all red. Oh, am I? I, ever, I avoid her gaze. I don't know how many spirits are attached to Zykun. I figured out a way to drive them out. This was all the evil spirits within the village. I can't even assist them anymore. 
I figured as much. You need strategies. You can help me out too. I can lead you to where he is now, but I'm not fighting him. You're an angel. You're even powerful enough to treat my life-threatening injuries. I don't have a great power. I don't have that great of a power like you think. Healing and defensive spells are my specialty. A demon like him can instantly kill a pure angel like me. Right. This way leads me to the forest and puts a protective barrier around me just in case. Along the way, we pass by a few people who have collapsed to the ground. We only followed Zycoon here from the village and couldn't bear the intense dark energy coming from ahead. Two priests are helping them. And I think they will be fine. My priority right now is finding Zycoon. As we go further, I find a trail of blood. Like didn't kill anyone, did he? I can't tell whose blood it is, but I have a bad feeling about this. I feel more anxious as I approach. I stand in front of the temple. I peek inside the hallway, but there's no one. Just when I'm about to enter, I feel a presence behind me. My heart starts to beat faster as I stare at the big shadow cast before me. I take a deep breath and I try to keep myself calm. I make my way from Zycoon. Keep my eyes locked on him. There's so much dark mass around him that it's hard to distinguish his body. He looks even worse than he did during the library. Those are ragged and fresh wounds over his arms. If he notices me, his expression turns fierce. All that blood. Is it yours? At a word, he suddenly leaps toward me. To reflect, I raise my arms to block him. And with his injuries and dull movements, his physical strength still overwhelms me. I should stay close to him. I should stay close to him for my power to work. But I can't get hurt either. Like when it's me. I'm here to help you. I know you're strong, resist evil spirits. He only his lips as he stares at me. He resists himself as soon as he realizes evil spirits are leaving his body. He says that Kuhn has lesser control. The spirits are sticking to him. Good, these spirits are reacting to me. Let's find another tactic to end this before he escapes. Do you think just disappearing will put the village at ease? They always warp stories around and make it the culprit again. Your death won't change a thing. I'll find another scapegoat, you know. It's help me with you. You might think we're associated. And with one another and come after me. I see Zekum's expression changing. It was surprisingly easy to provoke him. I didn't mean what I said, but I need to distract him. When he judged for me again, I raised my arms. But ready to prepare my barrier. I just cannot keep up with his movements, and I barely have time to react when he changes direction. This was like he grabs me from behind. I nearly stops as I let my guard down. With my breath and my body prepares for the worst. Hey, help me. His arms are wrapped around me tightly. I notice his hands are shaking. I can whisper his bring me back to my senses. I release you from this darkness. I direct the flow of my energy toward him. A huge flow of dark of dark mass surrounds us. I can't see anything as my vision is only black. I feel his warmth against my back grow cold, and Zekin releases me. I remember to face him, but I still cannot see anything. My hands fumble in empty darkness. I didn't cast him away, did I? I call his name, but there's only silence around me. My vision returns. The air around me is empty. There's no single train since I can. You did it. I hear voices coming from the bush. I've seen a group of priests from earlier approach me. That was astonishing. I've never seen a purification spell at such high level. There is no single demon left. I can't believe that finally after all these years. The priests give me a ton of praises to celebrate. I barely hear them with singing emptiness in my chest. The priests said to head back, but I want to stay here a bit longer. Did I kill him? Looking at the temple brings back memories. I feel my eyes swelling up. Why these tears? Maybe he's in a happier place. I feel my legs going numb. I take a deep breath and try to collect myself. Two lights suddenly pop up in front of me. Which of spirits. Thank you for saving Master. You're truly a legend. Because Master absorbed the dark spirits within him. They have been purified thanks to your power. The forest is now clear too. Why are you sad? Because you're worried about Master. We should bring her to him. I my cheeks to stare at them confused. The spirits lead me inside the temple to a small room. I see someone sleeping in a futon. Soft glows coming from the body. Zygoon. We brought him here to recover. 
He has a hard time keeping his human form because of the damages of those evil spirits caused. We better let him rest for a while. I sink to my knees, my energy instantly draining from relief. I feel my eyes getting watery again. I wait until he recovers. Do I have to stay here tonight? Master, would you please? I'm glad. Let's prepare a futon. I visit the temple for the next few days to check if my is okay. It seems like no one has learned that the demon is still alive. The rumors surrounding him have ceased. And some of the demon hunts. Zykun is finally safe. I feel Zykun's presence grows stronger day by day. We finally come to our senses. Weeks have already passed. We meet face to face again. But he seems a bit shy. Thanks. What for? The spirits told me that you were taking care of me every day while I was unconscious. It's also... It's also thanks for saving me that night. I was foolish to let my guard down, and though the spirits took advantage of me when I lost control of my emotions, how did you manage to save me? You gave me a portion that strengthened my power. I could have really died without your help. I'm sorry about that. I bring my time and take his hand in mine. Everything I did was to help you. I promise that, didn't I? Was the kiss all I do? <laughs> The library flashes through my mind. He remembers that. Can I wake up my blushing cheeks? I can check on my reaction. Obviously. And so the spirits will react to my touch. There are other ways of doing that, though. Never imagined to be so bold like that. Not that I mind. I feel even more flustered after his words. I feel like this is the best ending for Zykun. Wasn't that obvious? Can't be sure unless you say it. You never asked. His question brightens up as he chuckles at my reaction. Can't help but giggle at our conversation. In some ways, we're similar. I'm just gonna keep going. Honestly, I like I know it's a long one, but I'm just gonna keep going. Our days continue peacefully. The OG has been keeping me updated about what's going on in the village. They've been rebuilding the library after what happened. And a whole section of old articles has been destroyed. The disappearances and deaths have stopped since the night to purify the spirits. Most of the missing people have been slowly have slowly have been slowly been returning. Holy crap! Most of the missing people have been slowly been returning. And investigations are progressing. As the testimonies of the priests are not exactly credible. Police chalked it up to failed hostage attempts and left it at that. Rasume has been trying to help out with finding people too. Even though she's not fond of demons, she occasionally asks me about Saikun. Many spirits were harmed during that night. It will take a while before the forest finds its balance again. I have not seen Keiichi since then. MP found a new job in another place. Priests have been sending gifts to my school as thanks for my heroic deed. Various rumors have been spreading around since that night. One of the popular ones being that the demon helped to drive all the dark spirits away. Uninspected, unexpectedly, it had inspired some people to become supportive of the great demon. I told Zykun that I would change people's opinions of him. I think I made a bit of a difference. That night was the only time Zykun exposed his presence within the village. So to the village's knowledge, it was his first and only appearance. Since he had not showed up again, the village's belief that Zykun is dead. My well, trusted few know that he's still here, and I intend to keep it that way. I'm surprised that he has supporters at all. Much less a few. So what happened to the demon after? Call him Zykun. The evil spirits were cast out of his body, and he promised not to do something so reckless again. I really want to meet him again. I knew from the start that he was a good man. You can always pass by the temple. I would be glad to know that you're doing well. I've been visiting him every day. I've never seen you treat a guy that way. I see a ship forming. Stop it, Iguya. We can't stop me from writing fanfiction. So I've never expected things to turn out this way. His attitude was horrible in the beginning. But anyway... Him, huh? He doesn't seem like a type at all. Woohoohoo. But I'm glad he opened up to me now. You changed as well. Have I? Maybe you rest her chin in her palm smirking at me. I know what she meant, but it's hard to tell for myself. Class starts soon. After story. 
Two years have passed by. What the fuck? <laughs> Spring season has come and I'm graduating soon. The village has been peaceful. Rumors about the demon are gone. Now it is just another story to tell. Tonight is a full moon. They can promise to take me to a certain place. What are you wearing? A bikini. Most people will wear them when they go swimming or to the beach. And why? I didn't think I was going to jump in and have to be naked with a guy, did you? Dows the towel at me and turns away. I used to say there was nothing to see, but now it matters. It's different now. What is different? I'll go first. Ignoring my question, he starts to wrap his sash. Soon he hear the sound of splashing water. I let out a sign given away his request. The towel wrapped around me, I slowly step into the hot spring. As I make myself comfortable, I notice that I is a bit far away. She need to get closer for the healing effect to work. I'm not even injured. How does I stare at him? He closes his eyes. It's been a while with this is between us. He's gonna stay here. And I'll go to him myself. Put the towel around me tightly and start moving toward him. I wonder if I can surprise him. What is his reaction? Apparently, I grin and take a dive. I can't see much underwater. the water. I know exactly this. So it's going to be an interruption. When I'm almost out of breath, I quickly rise up. Gotcha. Step out of the water. I splash water in his face. And unexpectedly ended up in front of him. Even though he stays still, his eyes look at me in surprise. Oops, sorry about that. You never change, do you? Hehe. <laughs> he fixes wet hair while I take a spot against the rock next to him. The energy around me is a bit strong. I don't know if you could take it. I am more comfortable next to you. I see when he worries about me. I'm perfectly fine, but you're a different case. Are you fine with me around? He sits quiet, it's just his gaze. Even though he's acting composed, I can see it through him. I lean against his arm and enjoy the moment. Together we watch the vivid sky. Romantic end! What? <laughs> Pause! Pump the fucking brakes! Why is it that with somebody I enjoyed, I got a good end? The two people that I enjoyed, I got a good end. And with the guy I did not enjoy, I got the romantic end! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> And to be fair, I also did get two bad ends with him. A new religion. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I hate it here. I hate it. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Cool. Cool. So I guess we have one left, which is the child. Can't be. Look at the baby. Alrighty, we'll go for him next. Cannot believe I got the romantic. I got the better end with the guy I did not. <laughs> Fuck. Alrighty. Well, with that, I'm gonna end this episode here. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you later.